Hello and good afternoon, CSI 158, section 841 and 847 students taking the Routing and Switching Essentials course for the Cisco Networking Academy curriculum for the second eight-week term during the spring 2014 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial and review will be on Packet Tracer 5.4.1.2, which is the Packet Tracer Skills Integration Challenge. As you can see to the right here, we have our addressing table, VLAN and port assignment table, and the scenario. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is assign IP addressing to R1 and switch 1, or router 1 and switch 1, based on the addressing table. So let's go ahead and start with switch 1. So I'll pull the command line interface up here, and we'll go from user exec into privilege exec into global config mode. And once we're in global config mode for the switch, it looks like we're going to configure interface VLAN 99. We'll bring that interface up with a no shut. I'm going to assign the IP address. And the IP address will be 172.17.99.10. It'll be a slash 24 subnet mask. All right, and we'll put a quick description in here. And we'll just simply say VLAN, whoops. VLAN 99 interface. So we've added a description on there and we've also executed the no shut command so we're good there. Now something to pay close attention to it's again a layer 2 switch so it looks like we're going to add the IP default gateway command on here as well. So for traffic being generated by the switch not passing through the switch but being generated on the control plane where we ping or trace route that traffic will use 172.17.99.1 as its default gateway. And it so happens that there'll be an interface set up on the router, a sub-interface, because we're doing a router on a stick, that will allow us to have that traffic routed in our network. Okay, so we've configured the switch one IP addressing. For right now, I'm going to type in and write memory, and we're going to save our config. And now let's pull router one up. Okay, so here's router one, and we've got a little more work to do here on router one. There's quite a bit of addressing. So we're gonna go from user exec to privilege exec in the global config. And I'm gonna go ahead and first drop into interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. We're gonna do the no shut command, bring the interface up to make sure it's up, and then we'll assign the IP address of 172.17 dot 25 dot 2 and this is going to be a slash 30 or a 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 252 subnet mask we'll put a quick quick description on here and we'll just say uh, WAN interface because this is the interface that's taking us out to the uh, well actually I'll say headquarters so description will be HQ interface alright and so we already did the no shut command there so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 10. So I'm going right into a sub interface on the interface, the actual physical interface, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. And so when we're configuring the sub interfaces, we want to make sure we get our encapsulation for dot 1Q and it's going to be 10 because that corresponds to our VLAN. The IP address that we're going to use is going to be 172.17. Dot ten dot one. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move into interface gigabit Ethernet zero slash one dot twenty, and we're going to add our encapsulation dot one q twenty. We'll add our IP address in here, so the IP address will be one seventy two dot seventeen dot twenty dot one, and it's also a class, or I'm sorry, a slash twenty four default subnet mask for class C addresses even though it's a class B address we're applying a class C subnet mask to it and then we're gonna go into interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 30 and we're gonna add our encapsulation dot 1q 30 put our IP address in here and that's gonna be 172.17.30.1 
slash 24 and then interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 88 and that's going to be encapsulation dot 1q 88 we're going to add our IP address in here of 172.17.88.1 and then finally gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 99 and encapsulation dot 1q 99 and then our IP address here is going to be 172.17.99.1 and that is definitely the interface that's going to be used with uh, that we just set up our default gateway statement on the switch it'll be forwarding traffic to this interface okay and so we'll do the subnet mask in here right okay so we'll type in I'm going to do actually let me make sure I've got uh, let's make sure this is not shut down there we go okay good so if I do a do show IP interfaces brief right you can see that it shows all of the interfaces that we've created are in the up and up state right and all of our sub interfaces as well so I'll type in and I want to make sure I save that configuration I don't want to have to type all that in again so we've saved that configuration so assign IP addressing to R1 and S1 based on the addressing table and we've done that it says create name and assign VLANs on switch one based on the VLAN and port assignments table Port should be in access mode. All right, so let's close that down. We're going to come over here to switch one. And I'm trying to see if I can keep this so I can see both sides. Might be a little tough. There we go, right about there. Ah, barely. Let me shrink this window a little bit here. Okay. All right. So we're going to create name and assign VLAN. So let's go ahead and go into global config mode. And we'll do in, I'm sorry, we'll do VLAN 10. And the name will be faculty, oops, keep it the same here, faculty and slash staff. We'll make sure the names stay the same. And then we'll do VLAN 20. And the name will be students. And then VLAN 30. And the name will be guest default and then we'll do VLAN 88 and the name will be native and then finally VLAN 99 and the name will be management all right so if I do a do show VLAN brief You'll see here we've got VLAN 10 as faculty staff, 20 as students, 30 as guest default, 88 as native, and 99 is management. So we've created, named, and it says assign VLANs on switch one based on the VLAN and port assignment table. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assign these VLANs to the specific ports, keeping in mind that ports should all be in access mode, or at least the ones that are named here and we're also going to probably be creating a trunk link here at some point we'll have to see if we have to do a trunk link or not alright so I'm gonna go into interface range FA 0 slash 11 dash 17 right so switch port mode access switch port access VLAN and that's gonna those guys will all be in VLAN 10 right so I'll do interface range FA 0 slash 18 to 24 and switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 20 alright and then we've got our guest or our default VLAN VLAN 30 so interface range FA 0 slash 6 to 10 so switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 30. So those are all in VLAN 30. And then we've got gigabit ethernet 1 slash 1. So we're going to go ahead and go into interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 1. So let's do a do show run real quick here. And 
Let's see what we've got. As you can see, all the VLANs we've created and configured, the ports have now be, have been assigned into those VLANs. Right? We've got connectivity up above. And so then there's gigabit ethernet one slash one. So it says configure the switch one to trunk and only allow the VLANs in the VLAN and port assignment table to go across that trunk link. So we're in gigabit ethernet uh, one slash one. We'll go ahead and confirm that, right? By typing it in one more time. All right, so switch port mode trunk and the trunk is up. So if I do a do show interfaces, trunk you can see VLANs allowed on the trunk right now one through a thousand five are allowed on the trunk and so according to our task our requirement here only allow only the VLANs in the VLAN and port assignment table so we're gonna have to make a change there so we're gonna go oops switch port trunk VLAN are allowed and you can see here VLAN, and then when I put a question mark in, we can put in add, all, accept, none, remove, or the VLAN IDs of the allowed VLANs when the port is in a trunking mode. So if I were to put in 10, 20, 30, whoops, 30, 88, and 99, let's see if it takes that. So it does. So now if I do a do show interfaces trunk, you can see that the VLAN allowed list has changed from 1 through 1,005 and it's now only allowing 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99. And that's because of our statement right here. All right, so it looks like we've got the, the VLANs coming across the trunk that we're expecting, right? So configure switch one to trunk and allow only the VLANs in the VLAN and port assignment table. We've done that. So configure the default gateway on switch one. So the IP default gateway statement, and let me type in, we'll save this information, do a quick show run, and we should see the default gateway right here. So the default gateway statement has been created, and it says all ports not assigned to a VLAN should be disabled. So how would we check to see all ports not assigned to a specific VLAN? And what the, v, the VLANs that they're referring to here are 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99. So if I do a show VLAN brief, you can see that the only ports that are left in the default VLAN are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and gig 1, 2. So from privilege exec, if I go into global config mode, interface range, FA0 slash 1, to zero slash five and then gi one slash two whoops gigabit ethernet one slash two so i'm going to do that whole range there and it says that those need to be disabled so i'm going to shut all those down and there's our confirmation messages that those have been shut down it says configure inter vlan routing on router one based on the addressing table and so that's our addressing table up top and it says verify connectivity R1 and switch one and all PCs should be able to ping each other and the cisco.pka server so we'll type in right mem as you can see we're currently at hundred out of hundred in terms of our completion percentage but let's make sure we're we're thorough here and so I'm on the router so let me try to ping and let me pull this down just a tad there we go so I'm gonna try to ping 172.17.2 10 dot and then PC1 is 21 and let's see if that works so I'm pinging from R1 to PC1 all right and it works so let's try PC2 172.17.20.22 and that works as well and what about 30.23 which is PC3 Alright, so I can ping there. How about the switch? Can I ping the VLAN 99 interface? So let's ping 172.17.99.10. Alright, that works fantastic. And we're good there from the router. And let's one last test. Let's try to ping 172.17.50.254, the .pka server. And let's see if we can ping from router 1 out to that .pka server. All right, and after it arped out, we've got success there. 
Okay, so the router looks, or I'm sorry, the switch, actually on the switch. So we're on the switch, the switch looks good. And let's go ahead and jump on the router and let's run those same tests. Let me shrink this window here. Okay, so if I ping, first we'll start outside to the Cisco.pka server, 172.17.50.254. All right, that works great. And then let's try 172.17.99.1 or 99.10, uh, which is switch one. That works great. Let's try 10.20, which is PC one, or I'm sorry, 10.21. So we'll do control shift six and 10.21, which is PC one. We'll try 20.22, which is PC two and 21.23. I'm sorry, 30.23, a lot of IP addresses here, 30.23, which is PC3. All right, so we've got success from the router to the switch and all the PCs and the Cisco PKA server. And let's try some of the PCs just for completeness as well. So if I'm on the PC here, if I ping, let's try the Cisco PKA server, 172.17.50.254. And so this is from PC1, trying to get out to the Cisco.pka server, and it works great. Can I ping 99.1? I can, which is the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1.99 interface. How about uh, 99.10, which is switch 1? All right, let's see if I can ping the other PCs. Let me try 20.21, or I apologize, 20.22. All right, so PC1 can ping PC2. Can I ping PC3 at 30.23? All right, fantastic. So we've got success. So again, this has been Packet Tracer Activity 5.4.1.2, the Skills Integration Challenge for the Routing and Switching Essentials course, Chapter 5. And I hope this video tutorial has helped you out and provided you with a good background as to how to configure router on a stick, how to set up the inner VLAN routing, how to configure the sub-interfaces, as well as all the VLANs that are required for the different PCs in this scenario. All right, I will see you all on Tuesday evening.